Hi, I have Keith Handler here on my show from Sterling Medical Devices. Keith is a top engineer here that helps ensure cybersecurity and resilience and protection of medical devices of their clients that they help assist through the FDA certification process. Keith, thank, thank you for being on my show. Thanks for having me, Lee. So can you tell me a little bit about what your firm does and, and how it helps clients in the cyber sphere? Yeah, sure. Sterling Medical Devices is a 13485 certified product development firm. Um, we help various companies design and develop uh, electromechanical medical devices, uh, pretty much from anything from concept all the way to submission to the FDA. So can you tell everyone what uh, ISO uh, 13485 uh, yes, that certification is, means? That, that is the ISO standard um, that defines the product development and manufacture of medical devices. Um, it defines all the processes that we generally run our business by. Great. So um, what are some of the, the concerns that you have as it relates to the patient uh, personalized information, sometimes known as PHI? Is yeah, patient correct? health information, that, that's correct. Um, well, uh, you know, our, our first concern, of course, with any medical device is safety. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the devices are treating patients as intended and not presenting any undue harm to the patient or anybody else. Uh, the second thing is the patient health information. It's very important that we maintain confidentiality for all patients um, in any of these systems. Uh, diagnostics, um, their personal information, all needs to be protected. Yeah, and so these devices, um, they have PHI, they also have a they also are involved with the generation of electronic medical records known as EMR that mm -hmm. feed into the various hospital systems that are used to pro provide and deliver healthcare to end users. Uh, as it relates to this, um, what are some of the top uh, concerns that, that you try to address as it pertains to safety for your clients? Well, uh, when it comes to information or command and control that can be done remotely on a device, it's uh, again important to maintain the integrity of those communications and to protect everything there. Uh, one of the hardest aspects, I would say, is integrating a medical device into a larger hospital system. We may have control over the confidentiality of the information and of the commands that are sent and received within a device, but as soon as we connect to an external system, we lose control of that data. So it becomes a unique challenge to try and make sure that we're protecting it, not only in our system, but also in any system ours might integrate with. Yeah, and, and there's such a myriad of ways devices connect, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, medical devices use infrared or yes. uh, near-band communication, but there's all these different vectors of communication which create new threats and potentials for mm -hmm. compromise. Yeah, and typically medical hardware is uh, pretty cutting edge. Um, you know, some of the things that they're trying to treat now still can't. Uh, so all of these things that you're bringing up all exist in medical, all need to be protected. Great, so in, in our next segment, we'll be talking a little bit more about the FDA, the certification process, and some of the standards that devices uh, might undergo to help ensure adoption uh, by the FDA and make, to make them commercially viable to be sold in the United States. And then in our third segment, we'll talk more about protecting devices against cyber compromise, uh, the firmware and software that gets embedded into these devices, and other things that should be done to help keep medical devices safe and secure. Thanks for being on the show today. Thanks again for having me, Lee.